All right, y'all are busy, so let me cut straight to the chase. My name's Rishab. I got a 36 on the ACT with minimal studying, and my philosophy is to help you guys work smarter, not harder. And so let's get into it. You can trust me because I'm a senior. I actually took this test, unlike the bunch of old people on YouTube trying to tell you what to do with the ACT way back with old formats. Also, I'm not trying to sell you a course like this guy was, and so you can trust me, this video isn't even monetized, so don't worry about any of that. And finally, also, I'm gonna give you actionable, high-impact, high-value tips, what I'd want to hear from a YouTube video, not generic advice that you're going to get from prep company videos like Princeton Review or whatever. So let's get into part number one, which is on test taking tips. So test taking tips. First, there's a literal hack, which is to guess E and K. At the end of the day, you're most likely going to have to guess on at least one question on the ACT. In fact, it's probably way more than one question. Um, and so don't guess B or C. Now, there's a brief paragraph I have on here explaining why. But in addition to this, towards the end of the math section, the math section has 60 questions. And so at the end, they give really hard like math questions. The last 10 tend to be pretty tough. And so they know that a bunch of students guess on those towards the end when they're running out of time. And if they put the probabilities evenly, then every student's going to get 20% of them right because there's five answer choices or whatever. And so if you just guess C for all of those last 10, you're going to get 20% uh, of those problems right. So you're going to get two extra points on the ACT or whatever. But they know that, so they have designed the test so that in the last 10 math questions, they put less Bs and Cs because they know that students tend to guess that answer choice more commonly, which is really weird. So it's actually a hack to guess E and K. And I'm not just saying this, I literally researched and I looked into the stats of the ACT test and this is actually true. So when you're practicing, doing practice tests and taking the actual test, guess answer choice E and K. And so let's get into the next thing, which is to guess in a line. So this is kind of adding on to what I just was saying previously, the E and K. And so you're going to want to guess, like, let's say you missed the last five, you're running out of time, guess in a straight line because that maximizes your chance of getting it correctly because the ACT has it in a distributed probability. So don't jump around in your guesses unless, of course, you're able to quickly eliminate a couple answer choices, then you want to do that. But um, if you can, just guess in the straight line for the distribution. But most likely, or most hopefully, you won't have to guess at all. And so the reason behind this is because I'm going to save you guys time by bubbling at the end. Now, this was a test tip that I discovered right before I took my ACT, and I've been doing it ever since for my AP tests, for school tests, for like any other test that I take bubble at the end with Scantron. So what that means is you're going to get a test booklet and you're also going to get the Scantron, which you have to bubble in on. And so rather than going in your Scantron, reading the thing and then bubbling and then reading the next thing and then bubbling, that distracts your brain because you have to go back and forth and that's less efficient. Have you ever noticed like if you split the task so that you're doing the same thing again and again, like you're making a dough of a ball of dough again and again and again versus making the ball of dough and then going to the oven and putting it in, you first make all of the balls and then you put it in the oven. And so similarly, that's such a bad analogy, but similarly on the ACT, I want you guys to bubble in at the end. So first solve all the problems in your workbook, mark it up, do whatever you need to underline in your workbook. And then at the end, when you have like five minutes left for the section, go back and bubble it in on your Scantron. That will save you time. Okay. Now don't study the night before. This is again, a general test taking tip for part one. Um, and if you do, I will be angry at you. It doesn't help. Uh, I remember when I was taking my ACT, all my friends were like studying the night before and it kind of resulted in a little bit of pressure for me like should I be studying but in the end I just went with my gut and I was like okay I'm just gonna chill I'm gonna relax relax my head I'm gonna meditate do whatever I need to do don't study the night before because it's not gonna help but what you can do is on the morning of the test read out loud for five minutes so take your favorite article I don't know New York Times or take a random book in your house and just pick it up while you're in the car being driven or drove to your test if your parents are driving you or whatever just read the book out loud for five minutes and then read the book in your head for five minutes. That's like a 10 minute reading warm up. And I found that this is actually really helpful because the ACT test starts with the English section. And so with the English English section, being like a native English speaker, um, I, I'm assuming that most of you guys watching this video are also going to be having English as your first language. And so being, in, being that way, when I'm reading the ACT section, it kind of just I have like a gut feeling of like what's kind of correct and I can kind of sound it out in my head for like 90% of the questions on the English section. And so English is the first section on the ACT test and that's kind of where you're sounding out things and I like say stuff in my head. And I'm pretty sure if you guys have taken a practice English section for the ACT, you will be doing the same thing. And so read out loud on the morning of and then read in your head. That will help you kind of get in the mode of reading a little bit. 
And then also um, on the test itself, let's say you bomb the English section and you're like, okay, now like I'm on math and you're like kind of demotivated and you're like, okay, I don't know what to do now. Like whatever. I just bombed this test. I'm going to give up. Don't give up. If you bombed a certain section, you might not have actually done as bad as you did because uh, like, let's say you got, you, you feel like you kind of bombed it, but you actually got like a 35 on that section. You can still, the other sections can still carry you and 35 is not a bad score at all. Like 34, 33, whatever you're going for right? If you got slightly lower, you can make up for it on the other section. So just keep doing your best throughout the entire test. If you got distracted on a passage, don't give up on the reading section. Keep going for the entire test. And I know this seems obvious, but I feel like this is just something kind of like psychological that you're like, once you bomb a certain section, you're just like, you become kind of less motivated and you do worse on the next sections. Don't be that way. Just refresh your mind and keep going. And also some colleges offer super scoring well, there, well, where you can take the test again. And then let's say you uh, you do better on that specific section, but do maybe even worse on the other sections. It doesn't matter because then you can super score. So just try your best on all the sections. All right, part number two of this video, which is section specific tips. Okay, so for section specific tips, I wanted to start out with reading um, because reading just happens to be the most commonly searched thing for ACT. People are always looking how to improve their reading and math. So with reading, um, skip by passage type. This was a huge improvement for me. Like, I'm pretty sure this is why I got a 36 on the reading, and it's because I went to the science passages first. As kind of a science guy who's taken like uh, science AP classes, like AP Bio, AP Chem, AP Physics, if you you've taken those sorts of classes, you're probably more familiar with graphs, charts, and kind of dense science reading. And so in the reading section, when it went to the natural sciences and uh, the, the they have a natural sciences passage. So I always just went and skipped to that passage and started with that passage. In fact, on my test, I started with the prose fiction passage because that was first on my test. And I was like, okay, I'm getting nowhere with this. So I literally wasted five minutes on the prose section, prose fiction passage, skipped to the natural sciences, and still made to finish the entire thing early and get a 36 on reading. So I just recommend, you know, start with your strongest one. If you read a bunch of fiction books and you find that you're like good on prose fiction in your practice test, um, then, you know, you're going to want to start with prose fiction. And likewise, like you just take a practice test for reading and that will really help you identify like, okay, I'm more strong for this passage or it's just easier for you to read that because you're coming into the test and you're like, like now I have to read so many passages. And so it's better to start with the thing you're more familiar with so you get into that flow um, and the rest of the test will hopefully be a little bit easier. So now the second thing I have is science. Science is honestly free and it's not easy, but I'd say science is the section where you can get a 36 and improve up. Science is the section where if you practice it, you can get way better than you can. Um, so if you've taken AP Bio or another AP Science class, if you do the science section, um, it should already be a little bit more comfortable for you because you've read those types of dense passages and worked on those FRQs with those random graphs and stuff. Um, but just attack the graphs and charts. They try to make it confusing by putting in random vocab words. They don't expect you to know those vocab words. They just put it in to make it dense and harder to understand. So attack all the graphs, all the tables, even if you have no idea what the passage is saying, attack science. I promise you, you can get an improvement in science if you keep just attacking those and working on science. Um, now going on to English, I, I just have one tip here and it's to be concise. And so I feel like, um, I was pretty strong with English going into the test already, but the redundancy was kind of annoying. Like it would always seem as if there's a couple answer choices that might be correct. And so I learned that for the shorter, uh, the, the shorter answers, those tend to be correct. So if there's a more concise answer, they might be testing to see your skills with wordiness and conciseness for writing and grammar. So try to choose the shorter one as it has a higher chance of being correct. If it's like less redundant, if it's the same information, just worded in a longer way, the shorter one is more likely to be correct. All right, now on to math. One tip, you probably already know this, but plug and chug, like you have a calculator for a reason. Try to plug in numbers, like substitute the variables with numbers and see what works out. Just keep that in mind, guys. Plug and chug, plug and chug. All right, now next, math section is 60 and 60. This is a timing piece, and this was like critical for me um, on my math section. So I'd highly recommend doing the easy questions fast at the beginning. So there's a bunch of random sites and videos out there and they tell you to start with the hard questions on the math section, which makes literally zero sense to me. If you start with the hard questions, you're gonna feel like 
less motivated to do the easy questions because you're gonna be like, oh my God, that was so hard. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like I probably just got five out of 10 of those last 10 hard math questions right. And then you go to the easy ones and you're like, wait, these are actually way easier. So start with the easy questions. Do like take a practice test. That's what I'm gonna tell you about at the end, like general study tips. And one of them is to, to take a practice test and analyze these specific things about timing. And so do the easy questions fast at the beginning. Don't double check them. Like one, one thing that I did is I read the, I did the first like five or 10 math questions. And then I went back and was like double checking. And that was a huge waste of time because I could have instead spent that time working on the harder math problems and, and potentially solve those. And so do the easy questions first, like the first 40 or so try to do those faster because the last 20, last 10 are going to be harder. All right. The next thing, this is a random tip that I kind of picked up on um, after doing like three or four practice ACTs before taking my my test. And so it's this math to frac. So basically on your TI-84, whatever calculator you have, they have this math button. Um, and so if you press math and then press the thing that says frac, that converts a decimal into a fraction. And so I don't know why, but like on two of my, on one of my practice tests and then on the actual test itself, I use this function in it like actually helped. It's so useful because if you have some weird like decimal number, you press two frac and it converts into a fraction like three over 13. Do you know the decimal for that? Of course you don't. And I didn't know it either, but I pressed two frac and then it converts it into a decimal and it's, or uh, and it converts into a fraction from the decimal form that I had got when plugging into my calculator. And it's just really useful. So familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with your calculator and with that function specifically, because for whatever reason, I found that it helped me get a free point on one of the questions. All right, fine. Finally, part three, general study tips. Okay, so for this section, um, I wanna start out by saying you don't need to buy classes or buy courses. Um, I've had friends who have taken these types of classes and courses, and I've basically heard that they don't really help. At the end of the day, these just help you stay on track, like, oh, I have to take a weekly test. They're forcing me to go to the test center, practice in my or in whatever in my community, and then and sit there and take a test. You can do that at home. So all the test prep you need is free online. And then second, this book here that you're seeing right now, a bunch of people have this book. I got an ACT practice book from the library, used it for like an hour, and then realized that it's not really that helpful. And the reason why is because these books are not officially ACT questions. They're not actual ACT questions. They're written by people who are trying to make money from you to buy their book. And so what do you think they're gonna do? They're going to try to make those passages harder sometimes, or in some cases on the diagnostic test, make it easier, or try to like make you spend money because they, they want you to think that you're worse than you actually are. I got a Kaplan ACT book and uh, from the library, and it was like, the passages on reading were so much more difficult. I thought I was gonna get like a like a way worse score on the reading. And then on the actual test, I got a 36. So don't trust these books. Instead, I'll put you guys on this thing right here. Full length real ACT tests. There's 88 of them online. And this page recently got taken down because the ACT wants people to spend money on buying their courses. But you can use the Wayback Machine. And so I put a link in the pinned comment section of this video for all of these practice length tests. Do however many you think you need to do. Um, I'd recommend just you know taking it and seeing what your score is and then taking another one and analyzing those things on the reading English, math, science section, like what I kind of told you to do to practice and also learn the timing. And then the very last thing, I think somehow this slide got skipped, so I'm heading back here. Let me put you guys on some this life hack, which is to either wake up early or jump in a cold shower on the morning of your test. This will wake up your brain and make you feel refreshed and make you do better on the test. I don't know why, but it just works. So if you are brave enough, take a cold shower or if you're not that brave, at least wake up early. So those are my tips. And so make sure to subscribe right now because I need internet clout. Also comment test taking tips in the comment section below. Like this video, again, liking and subscribing. It literally takes one second of your time. So please do it and bye-bye.